doctor. Thank you very much. Oh, where do I go, please? Right in there. Thank you. Is this where I take her? Yes, right in there. Young lady, you'll have to make out an application. I don't know how you got on this one. 22, 23. This way, please. 24, 25. I thought I was next. What's the number? 26. You are. <coughs> Here's this patient. Please sit down there. We'll call your number. Find the people. Oh, are you yes. telling you he wouldn't hurt you? Calling Dr. Brownlee. Calling Dr. Brownlee. Calling Dr. Brownlee. What's the matter with her? It hurts her by an ear. Okay, young lady. She'll be all right now. Just give this to the nurse at the desk. Look, doctor, as long as we're here, I was wondering, couldn't you tell me something for reducing, maybe? You should try exercise. Exercise? Yes, just try pushing yourself away from the table regularly, three times a day. Calling Dr. Crowder. Calling Dr. Crowder. Calling Dr. Crowder. Dr. Kildare? Is it something? Looks like strep to me. See what you can make of it. Let me take a look. I think it's strep, all right. Better admit her. What's the temperature? 101. Take a blood culture. Don't waste any time. Right. Well, Miss Palmer? Calling Dr. Wilson. Calling Dr. Riley. Calling Dr. Wilson. Calling Dr. Riley. Calling Dr. Wilson. Calling Dr. Riley. There you are. I think you'll be okay. Oh, thanks, Dr. Gee, that's swell. Say, listen, I want to ask you something. You know, I'm going away on a trip. What'll I do if I get seasick? You'll think of something. Thanks, Doctor. Calling Dr. Post. Calling Dr. Let's Forbes. Let's see to be responding very nicely Calling to your treatment. Green. You've evidently taken care of it. Oh, Jill, that's not so bad. Calling Dr. Forbes. Calling Dr. Green. Sit down, please. Dr. Kildare will take care of you in just a moment. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the wrist. Second degree burn, left forearm, five by two cm. How'd you do it? Burned it on a pleading machine. Yes, doctor? Uh, alcohol. How long before it'll be okay? Well, it's hard to say. It's pretty badly infected. When did it happen? About three days ago. Why don't you get in sooner? I've got to work. Not if you want to keep this arm. What are you going to do? Cut it off and give it to me? It's an idea. Hurt? A little. Panic. There you are. You better drop back tomorrow and let me dress this. I will, if I live. I'll try to live. On account of it, it'll hurt my reputation. Well, uh, I'll have to try. Thanks, Doctor. Nutrition, exhaustion. Hand me those smelling salts. I guess I must have fainted. That's a pretty good guess. And when did you eat last? I feel okay now. Broke? No, why? You look half starved. Which half? 
Well, it's not funny. If you want to keep on working, you better eat. Oh, I'm all right. It's just that You I... sit right where you are until I tell you to go. Thank you. And drink it slowly. Make a new woman of you. That'll be an improvement. Miss Morris, stay with the patient. She'll be all right in a few moments. Yes, Doctor. You take your time, finish that, and then go home and rest. And remember what I said, eat. And they'll be picking you up on a blotter. Thanks, Doctor. You better drop back tomorrow and let me have a look at that wrist. Gentlemen, I have called you here this afternoon because I believe that what I'm about to say should be of deep concern to each and every one of you. I have here a report of the surgical committee of this hospital regarding an operation performed by Dr. Weeks. I believe the facts are known to all of you. Dr. Weeks took it upon himself to employ a wholly experimental method in surgery. As you all know, rupture of the liver is generally fatal because of hemorrhage. In attempting to stop this hemorrhage, the only accepted method is a mattress suture. Yet Dr. Weeks discarded the accepted method, took parts from the rectus muscle and sewed them into the liver, accomplishing nothing other than to cause more hemorrhage. The patient expired. Dr. Weeks, it is my unhappy duty to inform you that the surgical committee considers your work as unbecoming a resident surgeon of this hospital. And they demand your immediate dismissal. May I say something, Dr. Fearson? Dr. Kildare? I was just as much to blame for this as Dr. Weeks. We worked out the theory for that operation together. It just happened that in an emergency, Dr. Weeks was the first to perform it. And the patient died. The patient would have died anyhow. We all know that. Perhaps, Dr. Kildare. But this is a hospital not an experimental laboratory. The staff member who first undertakes the application of new methods in surgery deliberately exposes his hospital to legal and himself to criminal prosecution. I have no alternative but to dismiss Dr. Weeks. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Dr. Kildare. Yes, Doctor. Sit down. I want to talk to you. You worked your way through medical school, didn't you? Yes, Doctor. And through high school and college? Yes, sir. You've shown great promise, Kildare. Level head, good hands. The whole staff respects you. Don't spoil it. Well, how do you mean, sir? Too much theory. Too much passion for experimentation. Forget it. Leave pioneering to the other fellows. If all doctors did that, our profession would stand still, wouldn't it? The medical journals are always full of discoveries, and how many of them are worth a hoot? Anyhow, don't experiment here. Wait till you're on your own. Then if you do succeed in thinking out something new, the best you can hope for is a pat on the back. While if you fail, you're a martyr. Remember that, Dr. Kildare. Thank you, Dr. Pearson. What is your salary, Miss Blaine? Twenty-seven fifty a week, Doctor. A week. And there goes a possible summer wife, a potential pastor. After ten years of extensive study, high school, college, medical school, <laughs> we pay him ten dollars a month.
Here, you take these, kid. I won't need them. Well, thanks. Hey, I'll buy them on the installment plan. Nickel at a time. Don't be a sap. Calling Dr. Lewis. Calling Dr. Lewis. Well, anyway, I won't have to listen to that anymore. Yeah, that'll be a break. Well, I'm holding my own. I came in here two years ago with a hat, a suit, a pair of shoes, and I still got them. Goodbye, fella. Now, wait a minute. I'll go across the street with you and get a glass of beer. What can I lose? You know, I feel just like a fella getting out of jail. So long, gang. So long, kid. Good luck. You know, I was thinking, if that guy was a truck driver or a shoe clerk or something like that, he'd go right out of one job into another. But here he is, 10 wasted years of study behind him. Not a darn thing ahead. Hi, Doc. Sam? Got any idea what you're gonna do now? One or two. I know I'm gonna sleep for nine nights and days without having to listen to three other guys snore. I wouldn't mind a little bit of that mm. myself. Washing your own socks, sitting up all night, standing up all day, dressing like a soda jerker, and for what? Ten bucks a month, your laundry. Who knows? Maybe I'm a lucky guy. Sure you're lucky. So long. Keep me out of it. I didn't tell you nothing, got me? See you tomorrow. Are you Dan Innes? I'd like to talk to you. Sure. What's on your mind? You were a friend of Jim Haley's, weren't you? Haley? Never heard of it. You have a drink? No, thanks. Mr. Innes, I... Haley. Haley. Say, wasn't he the guy that was knocked off in the bank stick-up? He and two others. One got away. Have some popcorn? Mr. Innes, you can trust me. Popcorn's good for you, you know. Ruffage. I'm Janet Haley. Jim Haley's widow. I used to see Haley sometimes. But I never saw no wife around. We split up. Didn't like his racket, huh? But I saw him again just before they got him. He... He died in my apartment. That's where the cops found him. What happened to you? I was sent up for two years. For hiding him out? For not squealing. 
Oh. I got out 11 weeks ago. Here's my parole card. Ever since I got out, I've been looking for that fourth man, the one who got away. He can help me. He's the only one who can. You know, you ought to learn to like this stuff. What do you need? Money? No. Just information. I don't know if Jim ever told you, but... We had a baby. Be three now. When we split up, Jim took it. Took it where? He wouldn't tell me. And he's dead now, and I, I can't find out. I don't know where my baby is. I, I've looked everywhere, and easy, I can't... Easy, easy. Take it easy. I'm sorry. Will you help me? How can I help you? Well, I... I want my kid back, don't you understand? I didn't know Haley had a kid. I never seen her. Then how did you know it was a her? Well, you said so. No, I didn't. So you're a pretty smart number, ain't you? Who do you run around with now? No one. How do you get by? I work. Mr. Innes, I... I've looked everywhere and questioned everybody. I've kept myself broke, paying for phony information. I've hoped and hoped until there was no hope left, and now I've found you. You've got to help me. Why pick on me? You mean you... you won't help me? I didn't say I would. I didn't say I wouldn't. I might be able to get you some information. But that takes time. Costs dough. How much? Grand. A thousand dollars? You might as well have said 10,000. I know it. Chief. Whiskey. Yes, sir. It's the boss. Hey, him. Him. Come on, get back. Get back. Let him have some air. Get back. Come on, get back. Get out of the way. Somebody hand me a knife. Yeah. Come on with a knife. Loosen his collar. Hold that hand down. Yeah. That's a bad knife cut. We'd better rush him to the hospital. No hospital. Lock the doors. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Both right, that right, back door. On. Some of you fellas get out of here. Come on. Come on. Hurry up. Come on. Both that back right. door. Come on. Hurry up. Get out. Hurry up. Let me have that scarf. Better let me take him across the street. Nothing doing. All right, it's your party. I can stop the bleeding. If I don't get him on an operating table, he'll never use this arm again. Take him in the back room. Yeah. Come on, fellas. Right. Right. Be careful of that arm. Come on, take it easy. Thanks, Doc. Much obliged, but this case has got to be off the record. Well, I hope you realize what you're doing. That's all right, Doc. You've done all you can. Now you better scram out of here. I'll let you out. Jeff, I'm not going to let that fellow die. Get me some rum and some towels. Get me some boiling water, quick. Where? I don't know. Get it. The end of the bar. What are you doing with my fiddle? I'll write your letter. 
You make me a letter. Get me the biggest needle you can find and hurry it up. Jeff, bring them all back here and I need an ice pick and a couple of lime squeezers. But doctor, you took my ear string. Take his coat off. Be careful of his arm, fellas. Somebody turn on that light. Easy, hey, huh? get me a couple of bowls, pots, anything. See if you can find a pair of scissors. Watch his arm. Let him down. Best in the house, Doc. 14 years old. Good. Somebody give me a hand with this table. <laughs> Fill it up. Jeff, you got the line squeezers? Yeah, here they are. Throw them in there. Will this need to do? Yes, it'll have to. Drop it in. Fill this up. That's enough. Hand me that cold water. Fill that up with rum. Fill it up. Fill it right up. That's enough. Pour some of that on my hands. That rum. You hold his arm out straight. You better take a weasel. That's enough. Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Now hold his arm. Stand close and give me a hand. Hold this lime squeezer and keep the muscles apart like that, see? Don't touch my hands. The kid's got eyes in his fingers. Well, that's that. You're okay for my dough, Doc. Thanks. You stay here and keep an eye on him. The rest of you fellas clear out of here and let them get some rest. You too, nurse. Outside, you guys. You heard what the doc said. Come on, you see the way I got so many money? These fingers work. Come on. I want to share that brick. Now you're a good assistant. Come in, drink. Thanks that a lot. Yeah, right. sit down. Jeff, some whiskey, quick. Yeah, sure. Here, take this over. Here, doc. Thanks. Drink this. Feel better now? I always seem to be fainting around you. <laughs> Couldn't pick a better doctor to faint around. You know, you're all right. So are you. Tell me something. What are you doing around a place like this? I, uh... I had to see somebody about... about some business. You know, there's something funny about you. What? I don't know. Maybe it's my hat. <laughs> no. I mean something nice, something I like. Oh, then it couldn't be my hat. Well, remember, I'll be looking for you at the clinic tomorrow. Not only my patient, you're my favorite assistant now. Yes, I'm a swell assistant. I passed out. <laughs> you're a considered one. At least you waited till it was over. I'd see you home, but I have to stick around and take a look at him. What are you smiling for? Was I smiling? Well, don't you know when you're smiling? I don't know. You have to do it often. I like it. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.
sir. It's me, Mrs. Mooney. Top of the morning to you. Good morning, Mrs. Mooney. I'll get the rent right away. Will you have a cup of coffee? Ah, uh, no, thanks, darling. It's but a cat's whisker ago I got up from breakfast myself. But by the way, that little pushed-in good-for-nothing stool he's here to say again. I was all for telling him to beat it. Sure, the house looks bad enough without the likes of him standing on the stoop. But he says you was wanting to see him. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mooney, but I'll have to put you off for most of it. This is all I have now. Well, I suppose every little bit helps. You see, I had a little trouble last week. I burned my arm and yes, then I... Yes, something always happens to them that rents rooms from me. You got burned, Mrs. Goldberg's going to have a baby, old man Flaherty's been out of work for I'm over sorry, a month. I'm sorry, but maybe next week... Well, I'll quit bothering your head about it. But what about that little runt? Tell him to come up. What's the matter with the old dame? She must think this joint's a church or something. Say, if you think it wasn't a tough job digging up in us... Here's your money. I suppose so will fix now. Is he going to help you find the kid? Sure. For a thousand dollars. Come on. I've got to go to work. Maybe you won't need in us after all. What do you mean? Well, maybe I got a lead. Might cost you a little more. Listen, Stooley. I had to play along with you. I had to play along with everybody, trying to get one tiny little lead on where that kid is. But you can't wring any more out of me, do you understand? I've been let down too many times. I found you in this. And you're paid up, that's that. Last night I got to thinking, so I talked to a guy who tells me about this orphan asylum. What orphan asylum? This place where they take in kids. And I find out that a couple of years ago... You're lying. I didn't lie to you about Ennis, did I? All I'm trying to do is to help you. Sometimes I won't. Say, I thought the lead was so good that I paid a guy ten bucks to take me to the place. Where is it? What about the ten I laid out? Here's your ten. That's all I've got. I know I'm a sucker, but I can't pass up one chance, not even one. Because if I ever had to look back and think maybe I... Suppose you meet me after work, and I'll take you there. No. Right now. Come on. We want to see the Mother Superior. Mother Teresa, the man who was here yesterday. You remember me, don't you? This is the lady I told you about. Yes. Won't you sit down? Are you the child's mother? Yes. My name is Janet Healy. I suppose the man told you. We have no child named Healy. Well, I, I wouldn't expect you to have. When my husband hit her out, he wouldn't have done it under his own name. How did he happen to take her away? We were separated. When I married him, I didn't know he was... He was a bank robber. When I found out, I left him. And the baby, too? Oh, no, I took her with me. And then? He was afraid I'd go to the police, so he took the child to keep me quiet. I didn't see him again until until he came back dying. They caught him robbing a bank. He died without telling me where the child was. How long ago was this? A little over two years ago. And you've been searching for her all this time? No. I, uh, I've been in prison most of the time. They thought I was in on it with my husband, and when they found him in my apartment... I understand. But that wouldn't keep you from letting me have her, would it? I can take care of her. I work well, and I... First of all, we'll have to find her. How old was she when you last saw her? Eleven months. That would make her about three now. 
Babies change a good deal in two years. I know. Their features change, their complexions, even the color of their hair. But I'll know my baby. I'll know her the minute I look into her eyes. I hope she's here, my dear. I only want to caution you. You must remember that this is the largest city in the world. In the course of a year, hundreds and hundreds of homeless and orphaned youngsters are brought to places like this. Why, in this institution alone, three little girls were admitted at precisely the same time, under circumstances similar. Well, one of them could be my baby. Could be, perhaps. But it isn't very likely. And even Please let me see them. Oh, no, I'm sure I will. I've sent for them. But, my dear, I must caution you again. Many mothers have come here with hope in their hearts, only to go away disappointed. Hope sometimes can be a false prophet. Here they are. I'm sorry, my dear. I tried to warn you. Thank you, Mother. You've been very kind. Any luck? Where does Innes live? That won't get you nowhere. Where does he live? West 54th Street. The Chatterley, but... But listen, you ought to... You can lay out my things now, Grote. What are you gonna wear? And I always told you to say, sir. Oh, come off of it. Let's skip that. You're probably the worst butler I ever had. Well, why don't you fire me? Not a chance. As a matter of fact, I was going to adopt you, if you could only cook. Oh, quit it, will you? How long you still got to work for me? Sixteen weeks. Sixteen weeks, eh? Well, Grote, my good man, let that be a lesson to you. Never play cards again when you haven't the dough to pay off. See who that is, will you? I'd like to see Mr. Innes. Who wants him? Miss Haley, Janet Haley. Come in, Miss Haley. Come on in here. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that... Okay, I'm just having my breakfast. Will you join me? No, I'll wait in here. Hey, Grote, never mind that. Start laying out my things.
Sometimes they like to listen. Guy sure has a tough time getting good help these days. Well, uh, make yourself at home. Take off your coat. No, thanks. Well, won't you sit down? I didn't mean to bother you. That's but... all right. I'm glad to see you. Mr. Ennis, I, uh, I've been thinking... You know, a, a nice number like you shouldn't have to sing. It's impossible for me to raise a thousand dollars, but I thought of a plan. You see, I've got a job and I earn twenty-eight dollars a week. And I thought of... Well, if you'd let me pay, say, twenty dollars of a... Twenty a week? Say, I ain't interested in chicken feet. I want it on the line. But what else can I do? I can't raise a thousand dollars in one lump sum. I, I just can't do it. You know, I'm a funny guy. You see that mug just went in there? Tried to play me for a sucker. Sat in a poker game, his nerve against my bankroll. He lost, and now he's working it out, 40 bucks a week. But I've just offered to pay you by the week. Yeah, but I don't do that with my friends. A friend can have my shirt. But in business, I don't trust nobody. And I don't like to make friends on the installment plan. I'm sorry, Miss Dennis. I, I don't think you understand. You just don't know what finding that kid means to me. Sure I do. You know, you're a funny gal. You don't like popcorn, and sometimes I think you don't even like me. No, I didn't always like popcorn. I didn't like it until I tried it. At first, it was kind of hard to take. It used to stick in my craw. I guess I hit you about the same way, don't I? Now, those that like me are my friends. I'd do anything for them. Otherwise, it's just business. I'm sorry, Mr. Innes. I, uh, I've just offered to pay you... Chicken to... feed. I told you it would cost you a grand, didn't I? Of course, if you don't want to put it on a business basis, why... Uh... You'd like to kill me, wouldn't you? You're a mind reader. I wouldn't think about it if I were you, because maybe I'm the last chance to find your kid. And by the way, you're not to talk to nobody about this. Nobody, see? Because if it gets around, you'll never see your baby. Sure you want to have some of this? find my card. Someone must have taken it by mistake. Oh, uh, Miss Haley. Here's your time, two days. You mean I'm fired? What can you expect? It's 11.30. Oh, but I couldn't help it. Honest, I couldn't. You Sorry, see, Sorry, I... but this is not a bank. On duty tonight, aren't you, Joe? Yeah. It's a break for me. Why? I'm wearing a new suit. 
To say nothing of my shirt. Well, didn't you always say you'd give me the shirt off your back? Sure. I didn't mean my good one. Hey, where are you going with my necktie? Taking it out to dinner. Well, you eat anything with gravy on it, and I'll cut your throat. Don't be a sap. He can't afford gravy. What's with this guy getting all dolled up? Yeah, what's it all about, anyway? Cherche de femme. What's that? That's French. For what? For feed the woman. Evening, Miss Norton. Oh, good evening, Norton. Uh, case history, Haley. Janet Haley, day clinic patient. Tess, Hedges, Hankin, Haley. Here we are. Janet Haley. Burn, minor infection. Not you, Dr. Kildare. Well, the patient should have come back. Infection might spread. It has. You're not going to call without your toolkit, are you? <laughs> well, I'll pick that up at McGuire's. See you later. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. Hello, Doc. Hello. Hi, Doc. Same? Yeah, draw one, wrap up two. Ah, stepping out, huh? A little. Pints or quarts? It's quarts. There you are. All wrapped up and ready for mailing. Thanks. Take this with you. And what's that? Never mind. Put it in your pocket. Put it away. That's my taxi, Jeff. I'll pay you tomorrow. Okay, you're pretty good here, Doc. Thanks. Oh, sorry, Doc. Okay. Which way are you going, Mac? East. Downtown? Yeah. It's a small world, so am I. You. Well, sure. You wouldn't come to the doctor, so the doctor came to you. Well, I... And don't you want to ask me to come in? Yes, of course I do. Thanks. It's lonesome out there. You see, I... What's the matter? Nothing. Why? You've been crying. Come on now, tell the doctor all about it. No, I haven't. Maybe I'm getting a cold. That's bad. Patient refuses to confide in doctor. You shouldn't have come. Why not? I not only prescribe food, I bring it. How'd you like a flock of weenies? A set of potato salad? A slab of chocolate cake and a couple of bottles of very elegant beer for your dinner. What did you really come for? Well, that's the kind of a doctor I am. When I take a fancy to a patient. But I... I don't usually have company. You're not married. In love? Boyfriend? No, no boyfriend. Consider my application filed. Better watch out. I'm not the type of boyfriends. I've been bad news all my life. I'll take a chance. Say, I know what's the matter with you. What? You don't like hot dogs. <laughs> I love them. Well, come on, let's cook them. Okay, let's. Now it seems like we're making sense. Hey, 
Hey, where's the kitchen? That's it, over there. Well, you know what the boys at the dormitory would call a plutocrat. What's a plutocrat? Anybody which owns a two-burner gas stove. <laughs> you know, I've been cooking up vittles on a one-burner for the last three years. Well, we're strictly class here, all right. Now, here, you go set the table, and I'll have this banquet worked up in no time. Nothing doing. I'm not a table setter. I'm the best little cooker-upper you ever saw. Thanks, just the same. But with two people in here, there's no room for the stove. Okay. Well, you can't say I don't give in easily. You know, a funny thing happened a little while ago. What? When I was buying the beer, that one-eyed bartender handed me an envelope. What do you think was in it? One of the new V8s. No, seriously. What? Thousand dollars. What's the matter? A thousand dollars? Yeah, look. Ten one hundred dollar bills. Gave you a thousand dollars? I guess this is the payoff for that little job we did on that fellow's arm. If I could keep it, you'd be entitled to your cut as my assistant. You're not going to keep it? Boy, I'd like to. What I could do with a thousand bucks. You mean you're going to give it back? Sure, I've got to. Why? Well, I'm not allowed to take money. Interns can't do that while they're serving time at a hospital. Hey, those weenies smell like they're done. You know, I was just thinking, say, when I get practicing, how many years do you suppose it'll be before someone hands me a thousand dollar fee? Two bucks a visit's the best I'll rate. I think you're a fool to give it back. And you don't think I like to. But you earned it. It isn't as if you asked for it. Hey, quit trying to sell me an idea, will you? Come on, dig in. It's look good. You know, you've got an appetite like a bird. A small bird. Listen, you haven't known me very long. If I were to ask you something... Sure, what? If I were to ask you if... Oh, well, you'd want to know why. And I can't tell you why. Honest, I can't. But please believe me, it means more than anything else in the world to me. What the... That money. Don't give it back. Lend it to me. I'll pay you back. Honest, I will. I'll pay you $20 a week until every cent's been paid. But that money's not mine to lend. I'm not asking you to keep it. You can give it back to them after I've paid you. Well, I know it's none of my business, but... What do you need $1,000 for? Hey, remember me? You must think I'm crazy arguing like this. But that money doesn't mean a thing to you if you're going to give it back. And it doesn't mean anything to them. I wish I could tell you what it means to me. Well, if the money were mine, I'd be glad to help you, but... this money's got to go right back where it came from. You see, as I told you before, interns just don't take money. We agree not to when we get our appointments. It's because the patient that can't pay is entitled to an even break, too. Otherwise, it'd mean discrimination. It's the principle of the thing, don't you see? I see. No hard feelings? Certainly not. You sure? Let's forget it. I guess I was right in the first place. You don't like hot dogs. Oh, it isn't that. I'm just not hungry. Come on, I'll help you with the dishes.
Let me do that. Okay. I'll wash and you dry. Oh, no, they're all right. There aren't many of them. I'll do them later. Hey, do you mind if I smoke? No, of course not. I guess I better get back to the hospital. Oh, do you? Uh, do you have to go? Doc Wilson's standing duty for me tonight. I gotta get back and we're leaving. I'm sorry. Oh, we forgot to eat the cake. Well, it's uh, it's just as well. I don't want any. You mind if I take some with me? Of course not. It's yours. The boys at the hospital go for chocolate cake in a big way. They'll have a picnic with this. Sorry, I haven't been much company. Only you see. No, I... don't apologize. I enjoyed my dinner. I'm glad you did. Isn't there something you want to say to me? You forgot the cake. That isn't all I forgot. Next time you pick a man's pocket, don't do it in front of a mirror. I'm finding out where you live. That's the kind of a place you'd expect to find a gal that doesn't like popcorn. What did you want to see me for? Been doing a little investigating since I saw you this morning. Just dropped around to tell you I found your kid. Where? Where is she? Tell oh, me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so fast. You're like Stooley and the rest of them. You're lying. Just before you lost the kid, you bought her something, didn't you? Was it this? She, please tell me. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. You've been through an awful lot. Now, you don't want to get yourself all excited, do But you? I've got to see it. Don't you understand? Won't you let me see it just once? Sure. But first, we've got to make plans. 
you got to figure out how you're going to take care of her. Where are you going to keep her? you got to talk that over. Now, I've got a nice little place up in the country, maybe you'd like. Take it over. Oh. If you decide to go, you'd... Uh... Better get yourself some new clothes. Those you got on ain't so good. Whiskey. Huh? Oh, okay. See that Hanlon gets that, will you? Hey, Weasel. Something wrong, Doc? No, I'm just giving it back. Giving it back? I can't keep it. I don't get you. I'm not allowed to. It's against hospital rules. But look, Doc, the way you fixed Hanlon up here... I never fixed anybody up. I never heard of Hanlon. I just come here now and then for a beer, that's all. Hiya, Doc. What's the matter? Ain't it enough? No, it's not hey, that. I'm no piker. I'll double it. What do you think of that? I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. Oh. My, my dough ain't uh, good enough for you, hmm? I told you I didn't want it. Now, will you go away? No, go away. Yeah. Come on, oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wait a minute, hey, boss. You shouldn't have done that. What's happening? Look, Doc, forget it. He didn't mean nothing by it. Now, cool down. All right, right all right. Take it easy. I'm telling you, you don't understand. I don't have to understand. No young sprout's going to tell wait me my Wait a minute, wait a minute. Scram, you fellas. Go on, let go. Of now, me. look, he ain't allowed to take dough. He wasn't even supposed to patch you up the way he did. He could have lost his ticket. Why, they maybe even could have thrown him in the can. Now, you don't want to get the kid in the fix, do you? They got rules. Is that why you gave me the dough back? Sure. Well, why didn't he tell me? Hey, look, kid, I, uh, I got you all wrong. <laughs> Honest, I, I wouldn't have smacked you around it. All night. right, all right, forget it. Well, yeah, sure, but... You see, uh, you've done me an awful good turn, and uh, I got it all figured out wrong. Uh, well, look, I, I, I want to be friends. And when a guy's a friend of mine, I'll go to town for him, see? Anything you want, you just name it. And forget about that dough, that's all right. Maybe shouldn't have offered it to you in the first place, but anything else you want, you just name it. And, and that goes for me. And for the boys, too. What is he sore at the dock for? Pipe down. Started? Pipe down, I'll tell you later. Well, you know, have a drink with me now, won't you? Sure. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, set him up. Coming right up. A thousand bucks. And he hands it back like a handful of feathers. Say, did you ever hear of a guy giving back dough before? Sure. But he had a 38 sticking in his ribs.
Roll up your sleeve. It isn't that. I only... Roll it up. I came to tell you I'm going away. Inflammation's down. Infection's cleared up. I know you don't want to talk to me. I don't blame you. I'll put on a new dressing. Please listen to me. Oh, it's practically healed. You won't have to come back. I'm never coming back. I wouldn't have come today, only I... I couldn't go away feeling it. If you remember me at all, you'd remember me as a thief. And I'm not a thief. Please believe that. I, I couldn't tell you last night, and I, I can't tell you now. When you read this, don't have any regrets. You couldn't have helped me even if you had known. He wouldn't have taken money. Don't read it now. Read it tonight when you're through working. It won't make any difference then. If you hate me, just remember I'll be hating myself that much more. Anyhow, you'll understand. Goodbye. Just sit here, please. Dr. Kildare, this is the next patient. Dr. Kildare. Huh? Oh. I'll see Dr. Wilson, will you? Well, can you imagine that? I've got to go out. What, again? When that guy gets a thirst, it's a real emergency. I want to see Miss Haley. Oh, uh, you're a little late for that. She's gone, moved out. Did she leave a forwarding address? Huh. She left nothing but a coffee pot and an old pair of silk stockings. How long ago did she leave? Oh, about five minutes ago. Maybe four. Oh, but she was crying. All dressed up in fine clothes and the tears are streaming down her face. Oh, I figured it a bit of hot tea would do her good. And downstairs I go to make it. And who she'll be waiting for her here in the hall but that slick-looking dude. Who? You met him. Came to see her last night, just as you was leaving. Remember? Do you know his name? I heard her call him Innes. Innes? And about five minutes back, I come with a tea and she's gone. Her in her suitcase. And there's me rent on the dresser every last day. Hey, Jeff. Hello, Doc. You know a man named Dennis? Dan Innes, yes. Where does he live? Well, you got me there. Wait a minute, Stooley will know. Hey, Stooley, what do you want with Dan Innes? I gotta find him right away. Well, no trouble, I hope. You know he's a tough customer. You know where Dan Innes lives? Yeah. Oh. Hey, wait a minute, Doc. I'll send a couple of the boys with you. No, thanks. I'll take care of him myself. Well, I don't want to get mixed up in no trouble. I tell you, I don't want to get mixed up. You wait here, I may need you. You too. Listen, if he sees me, he... Mr. Ennis ain't home. You sure? Yes, sir. He left for a weekend. He's been gone about 15 minutes. Let's see how fast you can drop this thing. Where can I find Hanlon right away? He ought to be in his office now. Well, where is it? East 22nd. East 22nd Street, and step on it. Hi. Right. What do you use for brains, huh? What's the idea of covering 12 grand on that Apollo neck at those odds and not even spreading it? But Curly told me he was covering half of it in Chicago. Who are you taking the orders from, Curly or me? Now get this, Ollie! I'm not running any annex to the mint. When they start dumping a horse, the race is out. You understand? From now on, we're not covering any more than three grand on any horse, no matter if it's the only horse in the race. Now get that. Maybe it's the cops. Cops don't knock, they break in. Tommy. Okay, open up.
Oh, so it's you, Doc. Come on in. All right, beat it. Hi. Sorry to trouble you, but it's important. You can't trouble me. What's up? Can I speak to you alone for a minute? Sure, right in there. Okay, boys. Shoot. Hanlon, you told me to come to you if I needed a favor. Any time. I need one now, and I need it quick. Name it. Do you know Dan Ennis? Sure. What about him? He's leaving town with a girl, and I want her stopped. What's a girl to you? She's... Well, she's a friend of mine. And this is tough. There might be trouble. Is she worth it? More than worth it. Don't waste time asking questions. She doesn't want to go with him. When did they start? Well, I'm not sure. Maybe 20 minutes ago. Then we got a chance. Look, you be a good guy and relax. Quit worrying. I'll have it here before you're an hour older. Listen, everybody. Get Eddie on the wire. You get Leo. See if Slats Murphy's over at the Pelican Club. You three, come here. You get a hold of Shorty and Big Boy and Lefty Barrel. I've got Eddie. Hurry up. Hello. Okay, Hello, Eddie. Get a hold of a couple of the boys and go over to Grand Central Station. Yeah, watch out for Ennis and the dame. Dan Ennis. That's right. And bring the dame here. I got Slats Murphy. Okay. Hello, Slats. Run over to Penn Station. Plant somebody upstairs. You cover the order ramp and watch out for Ennis and the dame. If you pick them up, bring the dame here. Say, boss. That's right. Here's Leo. Well, Hello, Leo. Stake out the bus terminal for me, will you? Watch out for Ennis and the dame. Bring the dame in here. I got a lefty Make... barrel, boss. Yeah. yeah. Hello, lefty. Case the Holland Tunnel for me, will you? And watch out for Dan Ennis. You know his car. He's got a dame in it. Bring the dame in here. Okay. Bus for Kansas City. Leaving at gate number four. Connections for outlying points can be made at the following stops. Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, Columbus, Dayton, Indianapolis, St. Louis, and Kansas City. We all can carry it. Leaving in five minutes. Connecting with all outgoing trains. Sorry, Dan. Handler wants to see the dame. What's that? He's got business with her. Come on, honey. Take your hands off me! Let go of me! Let go of me! I won't leave him! Do you hear me? Get going! What is it? Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Why did you have to do that? Why did you have to shoot him? If he dies, I'll hey, never... Hey, pull the gun on me! Oh, get him to a doctor! Please take him to a doctor! Pipe down, will you? Helen's giant step on it. It's the day. Open that man. door. Open that door. I'm sorry. They had a brief. Oh, you must do something for him. Please do something for him. Oh, what? They shot him. You can't let him die. If he dies, I'll never find my baby. Get him. 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 him. Get him. Get him. 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 Can't be moved now or he will die. Get me the Mount View Hospital, please. Hello, Dr. Jones on the second floor. Hello. Yeah, Jimmy. A what? There's no time to explain. Will you do this for me? And remember, plenty of suture material. Hurry up, don't argue. Get going. Now, please don't worry. I can't tell you how I feel. Don't try. I'll pull him through if I can. 
Alcohol. There's no use and you know it. The liver's ruptured. You'll never stop that hemorrhage. I'm going to suture. Suture? Jimmy, you're crazy. You can't. I'm going to use part of a muscle. It's the only chance he's got. What about us? We've got to pull him through. If we don't, we'll get what Weeks got. Kicked out. Maybe Sing Sing, for all we know. Well, you won't. I will. I'm doing this. Scalpel. Hello, boss. All right, all right. What is this, a holiday? Go on, get back in the cage there. Boss, I'm sorry everything's Oh. Right. So, they brought you back here, huh? Yeah, him is too. Bruno had to plug him. The young duck's in there operating on him. The young... Oh, no, he ain't. I'm not gonna let him stake his ticket on a heel like that. You, you can't go in now. They're trying to save him. I don't care. The young duck's straight, see? He's gonna stay that way. He ain't breaking no more rules. Go on, get out of there. Oh, don't stop him. Please don't. If that man dies, I'll never see my kid again. Oh, what about Kildare? You ever think of him? No. Yes, I have. He knows why he's doing it. Sure, for you. A dame that was willing to fall for a mug like Innes. I wasn't willing. Well, that's no excuse. The right dame would have bumped herself off first. You ain't worth what he's in there trying to do for you. I know it, but please let him go on. Well, I ain't letting him. See, go on, get out of here. Come on, Doc. Doc, come on, open up. Go away. Quit banging on that door. Come on, you ain't gonna go through with it. Come on, Doc. Open it up, will you? I'm sorry. My hands are busy. Sorry I got you wrong like that. I hope he pulls him through. I'd like to see you find that kid. Is he... is he going to be all right? I hope so. We've got to wait and see. Somebody get some coffee. We're going to be here all night. Hey, Tom, go on, run down and get a couple of gallons of coffee. Whatever. Hurry it up, hurry it up, come on. Pulse is picking up. Boy, what a job you did. Too bad this can't go on record. You'd be famous overnight. You too, Jonesy. <laughs> Not me. I only watched. You did plenty. Thanks, boy. Forget it. See you later. Is he all right now? Did he tell you? I've been asking him ever since he came to. He won't tell me anything. Maybe if I ask him... Stay here. Let me handle it. Doc saved your life. You know that, don't you? Now I understand you won't tell him where the kid is. All right. Bruno, give me a gun. You're not going I'll to... take care of him. Doc. The doc says you'll live if he sticks around to help. But the doc's wrong. Because he ain't going to be here to help. Get going. This man's in no condition to be left without medical care. Get going. I warn you, he may die. Well, that'll be just too bad. Unless... You want to change your mind? Oh, that's different. You do know where the kid is, don't you? Is she there under her own name? What do they call her? Betty. 